Kentucky. This is WYNT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Connor James. We begin tonight with some breaking news. Kentucky State Police issued a golden alert for a missing Martin County woman. We have her pictured here. 73-year-old Ellen Josephine James was last seen in the Tomahawk community at around 11 a.m. Now, we're told she has dementia and requires daily medication. She's described as a 5-foot-2, 128-pound woman. She was last seen wearing a pink sweater with black pants and flip-flops. She may be on her way to Florida driving a white 2006 Cadillac Escalade with the Florida plates LWM. E34. If you if you need to review this information, we have it all on our website, wymt.com. Well, an unsafe amount of E. coli, along with other issues, were found in some of Letcher County's streams. Now, for two years, a handful of organizations have been testing multiple streams in the North Fork of the Kentucky River watershed in Letcher County. Now, I talked with those who conducted the tests about what happens now. The streams that flow here may be small. But as the water continues to trickle, these streams carve mountains. Yeah, it's definitely an educational project, I would say. Caitlin Myers has spent the better part of two years with these streams. She is one of two people with the nonprofit Headwaters, collecting water samples from three areas in Letcher County. Uh, we sampled at eight different sites throughout Cross Collie, Dry Fork, and Sand Lake Creeks. Yeah, so we found that for, for most, uh, all of the creeks that were sampled, they did exceed uh, the limit to, that protects against a, uh, a primary recreational use, which would be like a swimming, as well as a secondary recreational use. Steve Evans is with the Kentucky Water Resources Research Institute. The water tested showed a handful of major issues. They test for three main categories. One is bacterial issues um, arising from sewage. Which there was a lot of. The water is essentially unsafe to touch. They also test the mine runoff and the erosion and sedimentation. There were issues there too. The hope of Monday's forum with the public was to help focus on what could come next. That helps us to gauge where they need to put solutions on the ground and uh, you know how many residences would need to be addressed in these various areas. So it gives us some focus areas. As they hope to be able to implement some fixes to the issue. Now, the presenters say it's estimated 34 people with untreated sewage need to be addressed. Hope you got out and enjoyed today. It was absolutely gorgeous outside. Felt a lot like fall, and we finally saw some seasonal temperatures across the mountains. Interstate 64 into Moorhead, though, you can see that we ended the day on a beautiful note, and you can see that moon rising, too. We've seen those clear skies throughout the evening. You see that here on satellite and radar. It's been quiet throughout the day. We'll continue that as we head into the rest of those overnight hours. Temperatures, though, some spots already dropping into about those upper 40s, looking into Somerset and even down into London, 46 and Harlan. Still pretty warm, though, in Jackson, 58, 60 over into Pikeville. Most of us will be into about those low to mid 40s tonight. A few clouds here and there, but overall we will see those mostly clear skies. And as we head into tomorrow, we will continue to see plenty, plenty of sunshine and those warmer temperatures or really those comfortable temperatures. Once again, a cold front looks to arrive late Tuesday early as we head into your Wednesday, which is going to bring more showers back to the mountains and bring along those cooler temperatures. I'll have more on that coming up in just a few short minutes. All right, thanks Paige. Well, fire crews in Cumberland spent the night battling a mobile home fire. This all happened off of College Road sometime after about 8 o'clock. Now we are told that people inside were able to get out safely. Crews are still trying to figure out what sparked the fire. And deputies in Laurel County say they arrested two people in their early 20s on possession of heroin and methamphetamine. This all happened off of West Cumberland Gap Parkway Saturday night. Deputies say these two people, 22-year-old Rebecca Welch and 20-year-old Ian Tyler, were found in a car with heroin, meth, and a large amount of cash. The two were taken to the Laurel County Correctional Center. Well, last month, police say a man shot his brother in Johnson County. Now, the accused shooter is out of jail. Joseph Fannin, the one who, pulled, who police believe pulled the trigger, was released from jail last week without having to pay bond. Those close to David Fannin, the victim, are upset with his brother's release. We're angry. Um, it's not fair. Uh, Joe gets to walk around, do whatever he wants, go where he wants, while David's been in the hospital fighting for his life, and it's, it's not fair. 
Johnson County's court clerk says Joseph Fannin was released with no bond on the condition that he, quote, had no more violations of law. Well, one Floyd County man is frustrated. While under the knife for appendix surgery, Jordan Kahn's garage was vandalized and his motorcycle stolen. This all happened in the Mud Creek community. Kahn says more than one person may have been involved because the bike was pulled across his lawn while in gear. He says he has a piece of advice for those posting on social media. Don't let nobody what you know what you have. I mean, you know, if they know that it's there and they possibly can get to it if you're not home. You know, I mean, be be more secure about things. Don't let people know that you're leaving home. Now, Khan is offering a $400 reward for anyone with information leading to his motorcycle. You can also contact the Floyd County Sheriff's Department with any information. Well, a new meeting has been scheduled for unemployed Black Jewel miners. Attorney Ned Pillersdorf says the meeting will update miners on the progress of negotiations and explain how to address creditor claim forms. It is currently scheduled for Thursday, October 24th at the Appalachian Citizens Law Center over in Whitesburg. Well, we first told you a couple weeks ago about a complaint from an organization that forced the Pike County Schools District to remove prayer lockers from its campuses. Now students are saying they plan to pray anyway. WYMT's Buddy Forbes has more. One prayer locker taken from Eastridge High School. I want this blessing back. More taken from schools across the county after a complaint was made to the Pike County Schools District. And, uh, so if we can't have one, we'll just have 50 or 100 in every school. Now students are accepting a challenge from Elkhorn City Baptist Church to pray anyway. I think it's amazing. I think that this is the only way we get what we want. This is the only way that we uh, fulfill, fulfill God's plan. You know? The campaign invites students to make their personal lockers drop off points for prayer requests. It's our decision to do it. And it's our right to do it. Taking back the project they lost when Americans United for Separation of Church and State asked the district to remove designated prayer lockers from its campuses because of a community complaint and alleged faculty involvement. It's the way that we believe. That's our way of life. And for somebody to just say, hey, you can't do that, and for us to be forced to buy what they say isn't right. The new idea would create prayer lockers and the rented lockers of students who want to participate. I myself don't plan on backing down anytime soon against the group they believe is targeting their freedom of religion. So we ain't going to sit down and lay down and let you let them do whatever they want to. I'm By turning the locker they lost, I mean, <laughs> it's going to be a hard moment to stop. Into a legion in Pike County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT, Mountain News. Superintendent Reed Atkins says the campaign is a student project with no ties to the district or faculty, which the AU alleged was part of the issue with the previous lockers. Now, Atkins says the district will not interfere with the student-led movement as long as it does not interrupt instructional time. Well, how about this? A Central Kentucky man came home after to a big surprise after a weekend getaway. The Mercer County Sheriff's Office says a strange device may have struck the man's mobile home from an airplane flying overhead. Tommy Woosley believes what came down was this foot-long cartridge. The device has left a large hole in the side of Tommy's mobile home and destroyed his shower. It's a, it's a pretty heavy object. It just, it's not like that you would throw something. 15, 20 feet. The Sheriff's Department says they have let the Federal Aviation Administration know and have since taken in the device as evidence. Well, today the city of Boonville honored the life of one of America's longest serving mayors, proclaiming today as Mayor Charles E. Long Day. Mayor Long served as Boonville's mayor for more than 60 years. He died earlier this year at the age of 99. Family, friends, and people in the community came out for a ceremony this morning where guests, including Senate President Robert Stivers and Governor Matt Bevin, current Boonville Mayor Nelson Brabowski, talked about what made Mayor Long so special. First and foremost, that he was a Christian. You don't hear that very often, okay? And the second thing was, he was proud of the city of Boonville and the water department. Several other events, including a luncheon, balloon release, and candlelight ceremony, were part of the celebration of Mayor Charles E. Long Day. Well, a lot of local farmers have struggled due to the drought conditions over the last month. But one Harlan County farmer says these, this is the biggest 
group of apples he has grown over 10 years. Kerry Creech has ran an apple orchard for more than 20 years and has around 7,000 trees. With all the rainfall we received earlier in the year, Creech said the trees already were filled with plenty of nutrients, so the drought did not affect them. If you do a good job thinning, that really helps when you get in a drought situation. So we've been, actually we had the biggest apples we've had in 10 years this year because of all the rain from May to August. Creech did say this drought could affect next year's season, though, which would cause him not to grow as many as normal. And today was the final day of the October Festival in Corbin. Crafters, woodwork, and local businesses are among the highlights. This year, the festival added an extra day on Sunday, exceeding expectations. The community showed their support by supporting charities. Vendors ranged from homemade bakeries to hand carving, each prompted to do what they do, celebrating their rich Appalachian culture, like Chris Cox, a fifth-generation woodcarver. I've been doing this like almost 30 years. Like as you can see, I'm looking at you. Music from Gary's Sound Machine filled the festival along with some furry friends. Today, like we said, was the last day. We're coming up at 11. A former Texas police officer is behind bars after shooting and killing a woman in her own home. We'll have more on what happened. But first, a major search and rescue operation is underway in Japan after a deadly typhoon hit the country. And a cold front looks to move into the mountains tomorrow night, which will bring us more rain chances. We'll have those details coming up.